Good morning, Ed. Thanks for being with us. Gary, it's a real pleasure. Thanks for having me. I have been looking forward to speaking with you ever since I had the opportunity to. So we have a lot to talk about, but let's start right with you telling us a little about yourself, Ed. I see that you were were an electronics engineer. Let's start there. Okay, well, uh, I studied here in Syracuse. I studied in Oneonta State University and also in the University of Buffalo. And I got pretty good in electronics. Invented a chip used in every bomb tank and missile in the U.S. and NATO. That was in the 80s in the Reagan-Gorbachev era. Mm -hmm. I realized who were building all those bomb tanks and missiles for, and I went to Russia. I saw the Russians were really nice people, and I didn't feel right about being in that industry anymore. So I became an author. I created things like Reading Genius, Into the Genius Zone, and uh, uh, Energy Healing and the Sixth Sense uh, products, audio and video, and was quite prosperous, doing very well, and then all of a sudden some things happened where everything just seemed to start going wrong. And I went from being extremely prosperous prosperous to negative prosperity, meaning deeply in debt, living in my father's basement, and I couldn't understand what. And I had no idea at the time what we would call spiritual warfare was all about, curses, witchcraft, demons. I had no, I had no clue. But I knew I was really down. I was low on energy. I would get tired in the middle of the day all the time for no good reason, even have, having a good sleep. I uh, eat healthy. I do yoga. I do exercise. And all of a sudden, I'm tired in the middle of the day. My head would get bombarded with various images that would make it difficult for me to concentrate. And... Uh, things went really downhill. So I had to figure out how to beat this or end my life because I was I was right there. So I started learning and understanding. I started learning and understanding some of the myths and false teachings that we were programmed with as kids uh, by, you know, the governments, the religions, the school systems. I started understanding, and, and I was a born-again Christian at the time. I, I was very uh, adherent to the Bible, and but something there wasn't working. I started understanding how to connect to this higher dimension, what I call higher dimensions of the universe, higher dimensions of love. And once I understood that, then I could feel the energy and the power of the universe. And then I could start healing A, myself, but I could start healing people around me. And this is only four, well, four and a half years ago. I'm 56 now, so this happened when I was 52. So. That's a little bit about my story and how I started developing this and connecting to the infinite power that's above and below us at all times, Gary. Wow. Okay. I'm following that. As I mentioned in your uh, introduction, you're a holistic healer, uh, an expert on the subject uh, that taps into uh, the mind-body-soul connection. So tell us what I just said there. We know we have a body. We know we have a mind. Most people don't know what their soul is. And the reality is it's not your body has a soul, but your soul has a body. So if for some reason you die, if you get shot, you get hit by a car, the body dies, but the soul doesn't. It never dies. It's part of eternity. It's part of the universe or the multiverse, if you want to get more accurate. So uh, the easiest and simplest way to discuss and describe your soul is I want you to think of an air, a tire, car tire. You know, typically car tires, they need roughly 32 pounds per square inch of pressure. If they only have, say, 16 pounds of pressure, they'll still run, but the tire will start cracking and having physical problems and won't be so stable. Mm -hmm. If our soul is weak, the body starts breaking down. Soul knows how to repair the body. If we take cancer, for example, any oncologist will tell you cells mutate since we're born, but the body knows how to repair and handle those. It's only when the body gets weak, and more accurately, when the soul gets weak, week that the body can't repair itself. So that's where we uh, hurt our knee and it doesn't repair and the pain gets worse. It, you know, we get tired and, and we can't understand why and we're taking all the vitamins and, and doing exercise, like in my case, but we're still tired. Why is that? Or, you know, depression, another one, right? So if the soul is not strong, if the soul is weak, the body starts breaking down, just like that tire with half full of air. 
so this mind body soul connection is crucial and the connection really is to this infinite universe because we're connected to infinite power above and below us divine masculine and divine feminine at all times but very few of us have learned to connect to it i figured out how to connect to it and i figured out how to teach people to connect to it once we learn how to do that we can heal and energize our own bodies without any pills without any physical exercises or you know any mumbo jumbo at all that's what's powerful gary yes and as i mentioned in uh, as we were talking before we went on the air that uh, uh, i am way over my head on this so i'm listening and learning as we go along and you and i had a session here uh, as well before we went on the air which we'll talk about in a moment here Mm -hmm. the the soul gets weak you mentioned Uh, so one one might then ask how does the soul get weak and how do you make it stronger well think of the tire on the car again it has leaks the air gets drained out so in our own life souls can get drained from a variety of things one of the quickest and easiest ways is conflict okay conflict can drain our soul uh one of the big areas that few people like to mention and understand but it's just dark energy dark spirits just like if we have a bag of money thieves will come and try to take it from us well our soul is energy and that energy is coveted so on the invisible or spiritual spectrum there are evil spirits demons entities and and a whole host of categories of dark forces that want to take your soul they want to extract your soul's energy and they do so for example a person that's depressed and i've never had a a a depression case or a chronic fatigue case that we couldn't solve chronic fatigue well someone's stealing their energy and it's a higher dimension so we have to learn to a clean that up just like when we take a bath or or brush our teeth we learn to to keep that stuff clean and we got to do it daily not once a month or when we're hurting right so we've got to learn to clean our energy field and we've got to learn to connect to this infinite universe and restore our soul just like we would you know put air back in the tire there's infinite amount of air but we've got to learn how to put it back in the tire or that tire is going to go flat so it's the same thing with our soul i went through a session with you earlier before we went on the air and i i kind of understand what you were saying as you were talking me talking me through the session uh you heal people over the uh, telephone i believe you were telling me 99 percent of your uh, clients are over the telephone i complained of neck pain and you gave me a session before we went on the air and i have to say you absolutely and positively did help me anyone thinking that this is all baloney i can attest to the fact that uh, it, it isn't so go through a little bit of what you do to uh, heal people sure well in, in your case if i can use your case sure. as an example absolutely you complain to me of a, a a neck that was hurting when you turn to the right or the left and you use the example of you know if you're backing up your car and you're turning right. that's when it gets painful and exactly. you say this is a chronic issue and, and you and i just met so i'm in asia by the way at the time uh, and you're in syracuse if i understand that right so right. but it the distance makes no difference so the reality is what i told you and what i'll tell your listeners is that perfect health is a natural state just like calm water is a natural state if that water is not calm it's because there's some force acting upon it if you don't have perfect health there's some force acting upon it that's blocking and preventing you from achieving perfect health what we're not trying to do is is something unrealistic which is trying to get you back to your natural state okay a mm-hmm. B, what I told you, what I tell everyone, is the spirit of your neck. And your neck has a spirit. Every body part has a spirit. We know that everything is energy. Everything, right? Anyone pretty much understands that now if they've been to, you know, ninth grade science class or above. So now what controls the energy? Because you're energy and I'm energy. Well, the difference is you have the spirit of Gary and I have the spirit of Ed Stracher. So... The spirit controls the energy. You have a turtle, you have a frog. They're both pure energy. Well, one has the spirit of a turtle, one has the spirit of a frog. 
So your neck has a spirit, and it's an active, living, intelligent spirit. And the spirit of your neck knows how to repair your neck. I don't know how to repair your neck. I'm not an orthopedist, but even an orthopedist doesn't know how to repair your neck. He's got some hints and some education about it, but he doesn't absolutely know. And so the reality is what we did is we got you into a very still, quiet state, and we uh, energized the spirit of your neck to heal your neck. And what you told me is it went from somewhere around a 2 or a 3 to a 7 or an 8, right? On a scale of 1 to 10, which yes. 10 is best. Correct. So spirit of your neck knows how to do that, all right? And so at higher dimensions, even though I'm in Asia and you're in Syracuse, literally around the world, right, we can connect to the infinite energy, energize the spirit of your neck, and unblock what may be blocking it. And typically what's blocking it is poor self-esteem, negative emotions, negative memories that we've had in life. And you mentioned to me that you're, you know, you're above 50 years old, so you've got your accumulated share of all that stuff, and that builds up. And just like a, a hose that gets mud in it and the water doesn't flow, it gets blocked up. Well, same thing with our energy channels. They get blocked up. We've got to clear those blockages. And the way we clear them is with higher dimensional universal energy, or what some people call love. Love is what heals. And in, in our session, I had you still your mind and work with your heart. Not the heart that pumps blood, but the heart that pumps love. Mm -hmm. So by using that love, we can clear the blockages. We can connect to the infinite universe, which, according to Albert Einstein, is made up of love. We can connect to that, and then we can restore our soul and start healing our body. That's how it works. Yes, I'm in amazement here as I'm listening to you here and uh, losing track of what I'm doing here. <laughs> Absolutely. Having a great conversation with uh, Ed Stracher, a holistic uh, expert and healing expert. I can attest that uh, in a quick session we had this morning, he's already helped me with the uh, with my neck. Uh, what do you say to skeptics, though? You, you know, I mean, you've answered this uh, part, you know, partially already, but what do you say to skeptics? Well, you know, how intelligent is a skeptic? You know, the reality is everything is energy, right? Even a skeptic knows that. That's physically provable. The reality is um, everything is energy, and all energy can be transformed. That is an incontrovertible principle across the universe. Energy has no boundaries. You can air, make something airtight. You can make something watertight. You cannot make something energy tight. Energy has no boundaries. With that, you know, as you mentioned, I'm an electronics engineer. I invented a chip. When I invented that chip, I took what was about the size of a pizza box worth of electronics and put it into something roughly the size of a fingernail. I met with tons of skeptics, I intelligent engineers twice my age, I was just coming out of school at the time, and they said it couldn't be done, and they laughed. Well, we did it. Now that's commonplace, right? That's why we have these small cell phones and electronics and, and, and a lot of evolution in that area. But back then, it wasn't readily accepted. So something like this, which, you know, we could say there are forces, there are systems that want your money, and they don't want you to know these secrets that are free and cheap and connecting to the universe. So I have enough clients and enough people who want to learn this that, you know, if the skeptics want to sit there and throw stones, well, right, they right. can, but, you know, they, they stay unhealthy. Mm. That's their choice. You know, everyone knows you look up at that sky at night and you see that in, that infinite right. amount of stars and everything, and you say there's got to be something there, and you can feel the energy and you know it's infinite. Well, if that can be tapped into to heal ourselves, then something there is special. And what I teach people to do is how to do that. And, and uh we do it online, we do it on the phone, 99% of my clients, literally, they're in Europe, Australia, America, of course, and I work here from here in Asia, and we do it on Skype and, and, and the phone. Simple as that. You mentioned something earlier that I want to come back to, and that is, you say the soul, the soul never dies or the soul never goes away. I'm taken to then believe or that you believe in like spirits and possibly even ghosts. Or am I stretching that too far? No, not at all. Ghosts are, well, look, you're a ghost and I'm a ghost, only we have a body. Some ghosts don't have bodies, okay? What happens is if, if we die, if you have enough energy and vibration, you go up into a higher dimension, all right? Mm. If you don't have enough energy, 
you stay down into, you know, lower realms. And the whole purpose of a funeral and that procession and those, those customs is to give the soul energy so that it goes into that higher dimension. Rumi, the great philosopher, said, you are not a drop in the ocean, you are the entire ocean in a drop. Literally, the entire wisdom of the universe is in every cell in your body. Jesus said, I am in he, and he is in me. Literally, the infinite energy that's in even the tiniest, tiniest amount of uh, quantum of air is incredible. And, and part of the ugly proof of that is an atomic bomb or you know a hydrogen bomb, nuclear power. Uh, tiny little electrons can explode and, and can have a massive, in that case, destructive effect, but... The fact of the matter, that just proves the incredible amount of energy that's in these tiny little particles we call molecules and atoms. So our soul, we are individuation. So think of a, an ocean made up of billions of drops. Well, each part of that drop is part of the ocean. So our soul is part of the entire realm. And so we're each drops. And so at one dimension, we're connected. But on a lower dimension, we're separate. So on one dimension, our souls are connected all at this higher dimension of love. At the lower dimensions, you have yours and I have mine and we're separate individuals. So that's a fundamental principle that the ancient Chinese knew, the native uh, peoples around the world knew, no matter where they were, whether you were from Africa, Australia, or, you know, Eskimos and, and Alaska, Native Americans, they understood this knowledge. And with Western civilization, it got educated out of them, and, and we got a different set of knowledge that doesn't speak to that higher truth that can really empower us to heal ourselves. So that's what I teach people how to relearn. When I think of soul, and I think most people think this way, it's what form is it? I don't know. I can't imagine of something not having some kind of a form or a body or substance. That's the part I have a problem with that, and I think many people do. It, it's energy at a higher dimension. So you mentioned ghosts before. Well, those are souls without bodies. So it's energy. Think of it as energy. So with that, it's understandable why you're thinking that way, but you're thinking in what we'll call 3D physicality. Right, exactly. Okay? exactly. And, right. And we're not, there's a lot higher dimensions than just 3D physicality. Okay. Right. And, and so... That's all we've been educated in is 3D physicality. Now, when you and I worked from across the planet, you felt the energy and you felt the, the, the vibrations come through. I'm con literally what I did was I connected our souls by you asking me for help. We connected our souls. I raised my vibration and my energy, and then yours raised with it. Now, I didn't have to hold your hand. I didn't have to be there in person. We just connected on the energy spectrum, but literally at the soul spectrum because you would ask my help. That's all we need to do. And then we can, we can elevate the energy of the soul and start healing it. So that's what I do. That's what I can help people learn how to do for themselves. I wanted to mention that you believe that everyone has this, let's say, power, for lack of a better word, or has the ability. Well, everyone's, got a, everyone's got a heart and soul. And that heart and soul is made up of love. So everyone's got love. Now, it takes a level of determination, it takes a level of clarity to follow the instructions. They're not hard, but I, I always get cautious when you say anyone. It takes a level of determination, a level of clarity to just quiet the mind, go past perhaps some conditioning that tells you it's not possible. But just, if you can do that, you can do it. The universe is up there for everyone. Everyone's got a heart and soul. Everyone's got a sense of love. If we can tap into that love and connect it to the infinite love above and below us, well, then we can refill the air in that tire and allow that tire to repair itself, allow the body to repair itself just as your neck did. Possible. Possible for anyone determined enough. Yeah, you're definitely speaking on a higher plane. I'm trying to understand uh, exactly what you're saying, and, and it is pretty clear. I heard just the other day, or I read someone saying that they believed in ghosts and a ghost was someone that had died in a quick, sudden, violent accident or something, and the spirit was someone that just passed away peacefully, and that was the difference. And that kind of caught my attention, and I thought I'd mention it to you as well. And so get your that's thoughts possible. You know, 
know, there was a famous YouTube video of a guy that uh, had a, a, a mouse trap in his garage, and he had a, a, a camera, and he showed the, the mouse trap slamming on the mouse, and literally you showed the mouse wiggling and then dying, and you literally see the light coming right out of the body and going up. And it was uh, fascinating. It went viral on YouTube just to watch it because it was so real. So the reality is there are conditions. Well, I'll just say the energy or level of vibration. If the energy and level of vibration are high enough, and for the most case, in most cases it is, the soul goes up into the higher dimension and evolves, goes to the next stage of evolution. And, and it's, we won't even, even go into how that's decided or, or, or so forth. And if the soul doesn't have enough energy or there's a lot of negativity around it, yeah, it may get weighed down, it may stay around. So I think that correlates to what this person uh, or, mm-hmm. or what you say the other day. It's psychic. Uh, but the reality is those souls, and I've healed souls on the, what I'll call on the other side, what you would call a dead person. But, but I've, in fact, in one case, it was a friend of mine. And he came, after he died, he came to me and he was, filled with negative energy and I healed him well just at the soul level and he thanked me and went he, he went up and evolved so that's possible and and oftentimes these quote unquote ghosts will hinder people and there's plenty of horror movies that show this kind of stuff they right. dramatize it but they right. will hinder people or they'll drain their energy just like a thief will steal your money those ghosts will steal your energy and they can they can cause some problems so I'll give you an example. Uh, a guy used to like to, to drink whiskey in a bar, and now he is one of these ghosts that doesn't have the energy to ascend up. And he goes right back to that same bar, and he may enter the energy field of a drunk there at the bar and drain his energy and then induce that person to drink the same brand of whiskey he liked. And I had a story once of this guy who said, I don't know why, but I just keep drinking. I don't even like it anymore, but, I, you know, 7.30 rolls around, and I just want those beers. In his case, it was beers. Well, I went into his energy field. We did a process similar to how we healed your neck, and I removed that spirit, and I elevated that spirit, healed that spirit, removed it, and afterwards he never craved to drink again. This not only happens with alcohol, but it could be porno or drugs or TV or, you know, any negative habits because they often feed and induce us to take on negative habits, self-destruction. I'm taking this all in. <laughs> yes, uh, this is uh, this is uh, fascinating. And I had a question, and I got so mem- mesmerized with your answer there, I, it, it slipped my mind. But uh, what I'd like to ask you, uh, Ed, as well, and then uh, we'll move on to other things and I'll let you run, but uh, I, I have heard, and I've li- actually lived this, that when a loved one uh, passes away, they may try to contact you through various ways or, uh, for playing around with the lighting in the house, let's say, or the office, or uh, you'll notice animals being more friendly towards you. Uh, have you experienced this as well, uh, Ed? A best friend from high school who I hadn't seen for 30 plus years and she had passed away suddenly but there was a favorite song that we always used to listen to and I'm lying in bed just waking up one morning and that song comes on the radio and as that song comes on I feel her presence and she came to say goodbye to me so there's a myriad of ways you don't wait for it you don't expect it right. you just keep your heart open oftentimes they come to us in a dream state and through our dreams and through what we call our pineal gland, which is a gland right in the center of your head that activates your imagination and your senses, the sixth sense. So that's a magical side of this spiritual world. Well, I have to tell you, Ed, this has certainly been a fantastic, uh, just a an amazing conversation that we've been having. Before I let you run, and we're going to get your contact information here in a moment, too, with the your website and everything. But I understand you work you work with orphanage orphanages around the world. Can you talk to that quickly yes, and then we'll uh, let you run. The nuns are the directors who run them and all the kids. So we keep all the kids healthy and uh, we do what we can to attract donations and sponsor uh, these orphanages, one's in the Philippines, another's in India and another's in Nepal. So I, I get lots of kids. And and they you know, they get attacked with dark energy as do the directors quite often. So 
uh, that's that's the charity that I work on. Thank you for doing that. That's wonderful uh, work you're doing around the world, Ed. I will give you the last word, and I can't thank you enough for this fascinating conversation that we've had this morning. And uh, before we went on the air, Ed helped me uh, with the pain in my neck. that definitely feels feels better. Ed, so I'll give you the last word. Give us your website, Facebook, whatever uh, contact info you may have. Sure. So there, sign up on our mailing list. I have a YouTube channel called the Healing Genius YouTube channel. We've got um, uh, free healing sessions online that you can access. And on Facebook, Ed Strachar, spelled S-T-R-A-C-H-A-R, Facebook.com slash Ed Strachar Spirit Healer is my public page. So welcome to Connection with your wonderful listeners here in upstate New York, which I used to go to school at. And uh, Gary, Dennis, I really appreciate you having me on the show. Absolutely, Ed. And thank you again for your help here uh, with my neck. We'll chat again in the future. Thank you. And keep up the great work with the young children around the world. That is a wonderful thing you're doing. Thank you, Gary.